everyone, welcome to the online tutorial presented by Yon Biology Nowadays. In this video, I will be giving you a detailed description on Kingdom Fungi coming under Vitaka's Five Kingdom classification. The singular form of fungi is fungus. The scientific study of fungi is called mycology. The word mycus in Greek means fungi. The cell wall of fungi is made up of chitin and polysaccharides. Chitin is more resistant to microbial attack than cellulose found in the cell walls of green plants. Fungi are heterotrophic organisms, meaning they cannot prepare their own food, but they depend on other organisms for food. The presence of chitin in the cell walls and the heterotrophic mode of nutrition are the two important criteria by which fungi were grouped into a separate kingdom and not together with kingdom plantae. Their morphology, that is their form and structure and also habitat are very diverse. They are cosmopolitan, meaning that they can be found everywhere, even in the freezing climate of Antarctica. But still, they prefer to grow in warm and humid places. Even though kingdom fungi is generally considered to have multicellular eukaryotes, some members like yeast are unicellular. Yeasts are used in making bread and beer. The yeast Saccharomyces cerevisiae, also known as baker's yeast, convert the carbohydrates and sugars in the bread dough into carbon dioxide and ethanol by fermentation. The carbon dioxide form bubbles inside the dough and as a result, the dough will rise. When we bake this dough with air bubbles, the yeast will die and the air pockets will be set like that. This will give the bread a soft and spongy texture. Some fungi are pathogenic, causing diseases in both plants and animals. Wheat leaf rust caused by Puccinia triticina is an example. This disease is called rust because of its rust-like appearance. White leaf spot on mustard caused by Pseudocercosporella capsule is another example. But some fungi like penicillium are useful to us as they are the source of antibiotic penicillin, the first true antibiotic discovered by Alexander Fleming in 1928. Do you know the story behind the discovery of penicillin? It was an accidental discovery. One day, when Fleming was checking the petri dishes containing pathogenic Staphylococcus bacteria, which caused sore throats, he saw that some of his plates were contaminated with a fungus. At first, he was not so happy about it. But soon, he noted that the area surrounding this fungus was clear, meaning that there was no bacterial growth around the fungus. Then, Eureka! He understood that the fungus was secreting a substance which killed the bacteria and later this fungus was identified as penicillium notatum and the substance was the antibiotic penicillin. So have a keen eye on things around you. One day you could be a discoverer like Fleming who can bring a positive change to the human society. Okay, so now back to kingdom fungi. Fungi except yeast have a filamentous body structure and these long slender thread like structures are called hyphae. Hyphae is the plural form and hypha is the singular form. The network of hyphae is called mycelium. Within 24 hours, an individual fungus may produce more than a kilometer of new mycelium. Now, I think many of you are not so happy because this image of fungus doesn't match with the image in your mind about fungus, right? Then, ta-da! And now, happy? This mushroom is actually the fruiting body of the fungus. We can call the fruiting bodies as the tip of an iceberg. In the case of iceberg, what you see above water will be a small mass of ice compared to the huge mass of iceberg underwater. In the similar way, the fruiting body is a small part of fungus when compared to the bulk of its mycelium underground. Also, remember that fruiting bodies of all fungi are not of the same shape. We will see about them later in this video. 
Based on the presence or absence of cross walls or septa, hyphae can be divided into septate or sinusitic hyphae. In the septate hyphae, cross walls or septa are present. Septa is the plural form and septum is the singular form. In the sinusitic hyphae, cross walls or septa are absent. On the basis of modes of nutrition, fungi are divided into saprophytic, parasitic and symbiotic. Saprophytic fungi, as you know, feed on dead organic matter. Parasitic fungi depends on other living organisms. And symbiotic fungi also depend on other living organisms like plants, but it is different from a parasitic relationship. In case of parasitic fungi, only the fungi gets the benefit, but the other partner, for example, the plant or animal where the fungi grows in will get some diseases and thereby have some negative effects because of the fungi. But in the case of symbiotic fungi, both the fungi and the other living organism will have benefits. Let's see some examples of symbiotic associations. Fungi form symbiotic associations with algae to form lichens. They are generally seen on rocks, walls or trees where it is not so easy for the fungi or for the algae to grow on independently. So now you know why some organisms go for symbiotic associations. The fungal partner is called the mycobiont. Myco refers to fungi and biont means organism. The algal partner is called phycobiont. Phyco refers to algae. The fungal partner will help the algae to hold on to the rock or wall or trees thereby providing shelter or a place to live on and absorb mineral nutrients for the algae. In return to that help from fungi, algae will provide fungi with food which was prepared by photosynthesis. It's like fungi will build a house for the algae and algae will pay the rent to the fungi in the form of food. If you see a lot of lichens in the place where you live in, then be happy, it indicates clean air. Pollution will kill most of the lichens. Another example for symbiotic association is the relationship between fungi and the roots of higher trees forming mycorrhiza. Myco means fungi and rhiza means root. In this picture, the white dust-like covering on the tree roots is due to the fungal mycelium. Majority of the land plants will form symbiotic associations with mycorrhizal fungi. In this case, even though the tree roots have the ability to absorb water and mineral nutrients, mycorrhizal fungi will also absorb water and mineral nutrients and improve the tree's mineral absorption capabilities. This is possible because the fungal mycelium have higher absorptive capacity for water and mineral nutrients as a result of the large surface area of fungal hyphae. They are much longer and thinner than the plant root hairs. And also, such fungi can gather soil minerals that are not available to the tree roots. In the presence of mycorrhizae, the trees absorb two to three times more nitrogen, potassium and phosphorus. Some forest trees like pines and birches will show stunted growth if mycorrhizae are absent. In return to this help from the fungi, the trees will supply them with food. Actually, it is just for a little bit of food our poor fungi do all this help. Coming to the reproduction in fungi. First method is vegetative reproduction. In vegetative reproduction, a part of the fungus will give rise to another fungus. Vegetative reproduction in fungi takes place by fragmentation, fission and budding. In fragmentation, the hyphae breaks up into spawn fragments and each piece will grow into an individual fungus. In fission, the cell gets compressed in the center and divides into two, giving rise to new integers. The budding is commonly found in yeast. The buds arise from the protoplasm of the mother cells and ultimately become new integers. Asexual reproduction in fungi takes place through asexual spores like conidia. 
Conidia is the plural form and conidium is the singular form. Then sporangiospores and motile zoospores. Zoospores are motile because of the presence of flagella. Sexual reproduction in fungi will result in the formation of sexual spores like basidiospores, ascospores and oospores. These sexual spores are formed inside the fruiting bodies. About the life cycle of fungi, a haploid hypha will form asexual spores through mitosis and each spore on germination will give rise to a haploid hypha. Haploid means the nucleus of the hyphal cells contain only half the number of chromosomes or one set of chromosomes which is indicated as N. For example, in the case of penicillium notatum, the chromosome number is 4. So, haploid cell means the nucleus will contain only half or in this case 2. This is the asexual reproduction cycle of fungi. Asexual reproduction occurs when conditions are favorable for fungal growth, that is when it is warm and moist and when there is lots of dead organic matter available. The offsprings produced through asexual reproduction are genetically similar to the parent. A lot of spores are produced for rapid spreading of the fungus in this way. But there is a problem. These spores cannot withstand unfavorable conditions. So when the conditions are unfavorable for fungal growth, meaning when it is dry, then the fungi will go for sexual reproduction. Here, the offsprings are genetically different from their parents. So, some of them may be better adapted to those unfavorable conditions and can grow well than their parents. In sexual reproduction, two genetically different haploid hyphae, let's call one hyphae as plus type and the other hyphae as minus type or the other way. It will not make any difference. It is just to indicate that these two hyphae are genetically different. But morphologically, both look exactly the same. The cytoplasm in the cells of these hyphae fuse and this step is called plasmogamy. In many fungi, the two nuclei will not fuse immediately after plasmogamy. This stage is called a dicaryophase, meaning phase with two nuclei. The hyphae is now called a dicaryotic hyphae or dicaryon. The next step in the sexual reproduction of fungi is karyogamy, that is fusion of two nuclei leading to the formation of zygot. Karyo refers to nucleus and gamy means fusion. The zygot represents the diploid stage in the life cycle of a fungus, which means that the zygot contains full set of chromosomes or two sets of chromosomes and is indicated by 2n. If we take the example of penicillium notatum here, then the nucleus of the cycle of this fungi will have four number of chromosomes. In some group of fungi like basidiomycetes, this dicaryon phase lasts for a long time, sometimes for centuries. During this time, most of them form fruiting bodies and some of them won't. Soon after the cygote is formed, it will undergo a meiosis division leading to the formation of haploid sexual spores. These spores will germinate into mycelium but the important point is that they will be genetically different from both parents. Now let us see the different classes in kingdom fungi. On the basis of morphology of mycelium, mode of spore formation and fruiting body, the members of kingdom fungi are divided into phycomycetes, ascomycetes, basidiomycetes and deuteromycetes. The first group of fungi, the phycomycetes, have xenocytic and aseptate hyphae. Aseptate means without septa or cross walls, while the other groups have branched and septate hyphae. In phycomycetes, sexual spores are called cybospores. In ascomycetes, they are called ascospores. The members of basidiomycetes form basidiospores, while in deuteromycetes, sexual spores are absent. Regarding the fruiting bodies, 
In phycomycets, there is no complex protein body, but the cytospores are formed in cytosporangium. In ascomycets, the fruiting body is an ascocarp, which is cup shaped. In basidiomycets, the fruiting body is a basidiocarp, while in deuteromycets, the fruiting body is absent. Let's see the first group in kingdom fungi, the phycomycets. They are found in aquatic habitats, decaying wood, or as parasites. For example, the white rust on mustard leaf is due to albugo candida. The mycelium of the members of phycomycetes is xenocytic and aseptate. The word aseptate means without septa or cross walls. I hope you remember this picture of the multinucleate hyphen. Asexual reproduction in phycomycetes involves production of asexual spores such as zoospores and aplanospores. Zoospores are motile while aplanospores are non motile. Spores are formed endogenously meaning produced inside a structure called sporangium. When the spores mature, the sporangium breaks open and releases all spores. And each spore will germinate into an individual fungal hypha. About the sexual reproduction in phycomycetes, two genetically different hyphae will come together. At the tips of these hyphae, gametangia bearing gametes will be produced. One hypha will produce a male gametangium with male gametes and the other hypha will produce a female gametangium with female gametes. The male and female gametes fuse to form the diploid cygote. The fungi is said to be isogamous if the fusing male and female gametes are of the same shape and size. Here, both the gametes are motile with flagella. In the case of anisogamous, one gamete is very large in size when compared to the other. Here also, both gametes have flagella and are motile. In oogamous type of fungi, one gamete is very large in size when compared to the other. That sounds very similar to that of anisogamous fungi. But the difference here is that only one gamete, the male gamete, is motile. The large female gamete is non-motile. After the formation of cygote, it transforms into a large cygospore. The cygospore may stay dormant for long periods of time, but when the conditions are favorable for fungal growth, the diploid nuclei undergo meiosis to make haploid spores. These spores will germinate into a haploid hypha. And can you tell me if this hypha will be genetically similar or different to their parents? The answer is, yes it will be genetically different because it was a result of sexual reproduction. Now let's move on to the second group in kingdom fungi, the ascomycetes. They are called sac fungi because their sexual spores called ascospores are produced in a sac-like structure called ascus. Ascomycetes can be unicellular like yeast or multicellular like penicillium. Some of the other members of this group belong to the genus Aspergillus, Claviceps and Neurospora. Neurospora crassa is used as a model organism for numerous genetic, biochemical and molecular studies. This is possible because the genes of Neurospora crassa are all sequenced. Also, this fungus is very easy to grow and has a haploid life cycle which makes genetic analysis simple. Some other members of ascomycetes like morels and truffles are considered to be expensive foods. They are expensive because they are found in the wild and it is not easy to cultivate them commercially. About truffles, these fruiting bodies grow underground and trained dogs are used to find them using their characteristic smell. The truffles are then dug out of the soil. According to the nutritional modes of ascomycetes, they can be divided into saprophytes that feed on dead organic matter, decomposers that break down complex organic matter into simpler forms, parasitic fungi that depend on living organisms and another group 
coprophilus fungi. The word coprophilus means dung loving. These fungi live in animal ducts. Sounds strange. The secret here is animal ducts provide an environment rich in nitrogenous material and there is minimum competition from other organisms. I think they are brilliant. The mycelium of the ascomycetes fungi is branched and septate, meaning with septa or cross walls in the hyphen. The essential spores are conidia, which are produced on coniliophores. The sexual spores in ascomycetes are called ascospores and they are produced in sac like ascae. Ascae is the plural form and ascus is the singular form. The ascae are arranged in the cup shaped fruiting body called ascocarp. A full view as well as a longitudinal section of the ascocarp is shown here. Let's move on to the third group of kingdom fungi, the basidiomycetes. Commonly known form of basidiomycetes are mushrooms, bracket fungi, and puffballs. They live in soil, digging trees, or in living plant bodies as parasites, for example, rust and spuds. Some are edible and some are deadly toxic. Amanita species, which are one among the most toxic fungi in the world, belong to Basidiomycetes. The mycelium of Basidiomycetes is branched and septate. Asexual spores are not generally found in Basidiomycetes. Other than sexual reproduction, they show vegetative reproduction by fragmentation of hyphae. In the sexual reproduction of Basidiomycetes, Basidiospores are produced in spore-bearing structures called basidia. The singular form of basidia is basidium. Basidia are arranged in the gills of the basidiocarps, the fruiting bodies. Basidia are club-shaped. Definition for a club shape is narrow at the base and broader at the tip. Because of the presence of club-shaped basidia, members of basidiomycetes are called club fungi. Moving on to the last group, Deuteromycetes. They are called imperfect fungi because only asexual and vegetative phase is known for these fungi. If sexual stages are discovered, then they are moved into ascomycetes and basidiomycetes. They produce asexual spores called conidia. Their mycelium is septate and branched. Based on the nutritional modes, Deuteromycetes can be divided into saprophytes, parasites and decomposers of litter helping in mineral recycling. Some members of Deuteromycetes are Alternaria, Colitotricum and Trichoderma. Now it's time for a surprising fact. Do you know which is the largest living organism on earth? If your answer is blue whale, then you are wrong. It's a fungus belonging to the genus Armillaria. The mycelium of a single specimen of Armillaria oste found in Malheur National Forest in Oregon covers 4 square miles underground. At this point I hope you will understand why we compare the fungus to an iceberg. It's a little sad that since this largest organism lives underground you will not be able to see it. But in autumn season, the fruiting bodies of Armillaria oste will appear as an evidence of the organism beneath the soil. Colloquially, this fungus is named the humongous fungus, which means enormous fungus. That's all for this video. In the part 5 of this lecture, we will see a short description of the other kingdoms. Thank you for being with me and stay tuned.